Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. Oh, man. <laughs> How's it going, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 556. Episode number 556 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And before we get into anything else, I'd like to ask everybody, please, spread it around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, and it is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's Radio. Dot com slash ghost. And of course, if you have not done so, please follow me on the last bastion of freedom of speech in social media today. And I definitely do mean that, folks. I'm talking about Gab, and you can get there by typing in your browser right now, gab.ai, and you can follow me on there under the name Politics Ghost. All right? All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost is the name to follow. And, of course, I want to say what's going on to the True Capitalist Radio chat room right now. What's going on, baby? And, of course, if you want to be a part of the True Capitalist Radio chat room, and, of course, I will personally be in there after this broadcast, voice chatting with everybody in there. If you want to be a part of it, all you've got to do is go to my gab, check out my gab. And hit the subscribe button for premium content. And once you do, give me a private message on Gab and let me know your Discord chat name. And I will give you an exclusive invitation to the True Capitalist Radio chat room. Once again, hit the subscribe button, Politics Ghost, and then Gab me your Discord name and I will hook you up. Anyway, now that we got that all out of the way... Let's discuss what we're going to talk about for the next three hours, and I hope that most of you are in here for the most of the time. If not, I understand. I appreciate your patronage, whether it's live or in the archive. I appreciate it. Of course, the first hour, we're going to talk about crypto and stock breakdown. Let me tell you something. A lot of weird things happening. We're going to discuss a lot of those things, especially in the crypto market here in the first hour. But in the second hour, I want to talk a little bit about Stephen Hawking. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if I want to talk about him. I might as well just go ahead and talk about him now and just not talk about him for the rest of the show. For all those folks that don't know, Stephen Hawking is dead. All right? He is dead, and uh, I'm not too sure if he was too sad about it. I'm not too sure if anyone was too sad about it. I know we got a bunch of autistic cases that watch The Big Bang Theory that circle jerk every time Sheldon Cooper says the word Stephen Hawking, and that's how Stephen Hawking has somehow incepted his stupid, insignificant self in pop culture, just like the affirmative action scientist, a.k.a. the Caribbean ballroom dancer, Neil Tyson DeGrasse. But either way, he died, and, uh, I mean, when I think of things like this, I always wonder what, what, what was 
Stephen Hawking's last words. You know, I mean, because he he was connected to the voice box thing. You know, so did he type his last words, or yeah, I mean, I, have you ever thought about that? You know, like. Oh my God! I think I'm going to die, and I'm going to see the. No, wait a minute! I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. Oh, oh, oh. my human resources are shutting down, and I'm going to go see. Oh, 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 oh my God! The Big Bang Theory. Oh, 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 I'm going to see the Big Is that it? Jesus Christ. Look, the bottom line is, is this, all right? Everybody who's listening to this broadcast knows that I've always been very critical of Stephen Hawking. I don't believe that this bastard really is saying anything. I think they've been propping up this poor bastard. And, you know, they've been probably, they probably have a commission of scientists who basically write down whatever the hell he's going to say out of his damn voice box. All right? I mean, it's the truth. All right? You know it, and I know it. And for you folks that are just trying to sit here and chastise me, thinking that I'm being a, a bad guy, I used to play this back uh, some time ago. All right? Now, I told you all about the little voice box that he had. Oh, yeah, I'm Stephen Hawking. Come over here and kiss my stupid ass. I want to show you what his real voice was like, folks, before he was hooked up to the damn voice box. Okay? Now, this, I swear to God, this is not a troll. This is Stephen Hawking's actual voice prior to him being hooked up on the voice box for the rest of his life. Now, I'd like for you all to listen, because not only is he going to say something that sounds like this, I, I swear to God, it sounds something like this, ah, 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 something like that, he's actually got a translator who translates that, so I want you all to listen close, this is the real Stephen Hawking, <laughs> Yes, it's really me. I died. I died. I died. I died. I died. I died. Anyway, this is actually Stephen Hawking right here. This is him in the real voice. Go ahead and play it, engineer. He makes it fairly obvious that they'll put Stephen's portrait if he needs. Now, I look, I know many of you right now are probably thinking the worst of me. That is really Stephen Hawking. I am not kidding. That is his real voice taken from a documentary in which they show his actual voice. I took an audio clip of it, of him and his translator. That's him. This is the guy who is out here defying God, claiming that we're nothing but bacteria on a rock. We're nothing but particles from the Big Bang. Haven't you noticed that all this is all sexual when it comes to scientists? It's always about sex. Huh? Oh, you know how it happened? You know how this whole thing was created? It was a Big Bang, baby. Yeah, it was a big bang, and then an explosion. I mean, what a bunch of sexual innuendo garbage, man. Anyway, look, I don't want to get too much into this. I just wanted to enlighten you because I know everybody's out there gabbing me up saying, hey, Ghost, you know that Stephen Hawking died, right? So I'm just acknowledging that he died. We get it. Everything's going to be all right. All right? Children will still go to school on his birthday, okay? Let's calm down here. Just because 
Sheldon Cooper and those fictitious idiots that are written down in a sitcom put this imbecilic, uh, you know, whatever on a pedestal doesn't mean that all of a sudden he's anointed as the uh, modern-day messiah of science, all right? I'm just, enough, all right? Enough, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're going to talk in the second hour. Uh, look, we're not talking about Stephen Hawking anymore. You, everybody gets it, all right? Everybody gets it, all right? Hey, hey you want to say anything, Stephen, before you, you know, go off to hell or wherever the hell you're going? Yes, I want you all to know that I trolled your ass in my whole life trying to desecrate your God because I was stricken to this wheelchair. I couldn't whack off. I couldn't wipe my own ass. I couldn't do nothing. So I had to blame somebody. And I did it in this stupid cosmic mumble-jumble that all of you stupid intellectuals actually block and pay for. All right, Stephen, we get it, all right? All right, rest in, rest in peace, all right, Stephen? Anyway, let's move on. We're going to talk also in the second hour about President Trump. He's cleaning his cabinet, baby. All right, he's cleaning his cabinet. Rex Tillerson out as Secretary of State. He's going to replace uh, Rex Tillerson with the current CIA Chief Mike Pompeo. He's going to replace Mike Pompeo with the infamous Gina Haspel. We're going to talk about all this. We're going to talk about all this because I know this is uh, being interpreted in many different directions in many different circles, and I'm going to discuss uh, what exactly is going on. Technically, what's happening, globalists are now being shoved out of the way, and now nationalists can now be recruited to come into the White House and in the Cabinet and be able to full-fledged 100% have a Make America Great Again agenda on all fronts without any kind of opposition within the inner circle of the White House. All right, and that's all there is to it. That's why this man, Donald Trump, playing five-dimensional chess without anybody knowing what the hell he's doing. Uh, we're also going to talk about how yesterday the president went to go visit the wall. Did y'all see that? <laughs> we don't need no education. We don't need it anymore after these freaking walkouts. But anyway, listen, he went to go see the wall and the wall prototypes. The wall prototypes, I mean, did you see him out there? What a photo op of this guy. I mean, he's a builder. So you know he was inquiring about everything. You know he wasn't stupid about building materials, etc. I mean, he looked like he knew what he was talking about. He was in charge. And a uh, great photo op for the guy. As a matter of fact, these wall prototypes are very, very interesting as well. So that uh, there's no uh, kind of no kind of open borders anymore on our borders, folks. We've had it, all right. We we had it for eight years with Obama. He didn't enforce the law. He decided that he was going to try to implement this uh, grandiose European communist garbage that's being implemented right now with the Euro cucks. He thought he could kind of implement it here and utilize the same strategy. Didn't work. And uh, now we're taking our country back, all right? America is taking our country back, and that's all there is to it. Uh, he also delivered a speech later on that day, yesterday, at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. And uh, in that, he discussed something about a potential space force. Oh, my God, are you kidding? A space force? <laughs> we're going to talk about that, all right? And then, obviously, we're going to talk about the national school walkout. For you folks that are unaware, we had uh, a national walkout in middle and high schools because, aw, oh, we are going to protest against the Second Amendment. That's what we're doing. And then if you ask some of these kids, because I actually had kids that are in the True Capitalist radio chat room that go to school, uh, that actually had the balls to go up to some of these people that were walking out and asking, what are you doing? Why are you walking out? Well, we're walking out to commemorate those that died at the Parkland School. Okay, well, you know that you're trying to take away one of your Bill of Rights, right? 
no, that's not what we're doing. We're trying to commemorate the lives of those that were lost at Stoneman Douglas High School. How dare you? And then the guy was like, okay, well, whatever. I mean, you know, go do your walk. They, I mean, it was such a goddamn planned liberal bunch of garbage. I'm sure that everybody was in on this from the schools, the educators, everybody in the – I'm just it, – it was disgusting. All right, that's why the cameras were there. That's why they set it up. It was a big mass setup of crap. And then when they came back in, because it was a 17-minute protest, it's not like they were outside – camped out in a goddamn football say, uh, uh, field saying, hell no, we won't go or something, okay? 17-minute uh, walkout, they came back in, and this guy, that this one kid that uh, is in the True Capitalist radio chat room, he asked this one broad, okay, now that you went out and commemorated those that died at Stoneman Douglas High School, what's their names? And nobody that was out there protesting Walking out, so-called commemorating these kids, not one name could they sputter out of their goddamn suck hole. Not one. And this just goes to show you that these kids, and look, I'm going to get into an intensive discussion. I am not going to, if I talk about nothing else, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to say that this is a direct consequence of leftism and the culture wars. And I'm going to talk about how leftists has used every different group of susceptible idiots and have used and abused these morons to the point now, now they're resorting to taking control of your children. They are psyoping your children into doing their political dirty work. It's disgusting, and I can't believe that everybody out here is condoning this crap. If you had a little brat kid that went out and protested and walked out, and you didn't do a goddamn thing to discipline that little brat, then you are a leftist piece of anti-American trash. And I spit on you, and I spit on your brat kid for not knowing crap and going out there and walking, begging for the government to take away one of the Bill of Rights, the Second Amendment, you stupid piece of trash. Give me a break. We're going to talk extensively about the national walkout from Occupy Wall Street to, what, Million Woman March to this. Good God. It's sick, man. Anyway, we're also going to talk a little bit about the Pennsylvania elections. Well, it's, there was a special election in Pennsylvania that was supposed to be some litmus test for 2018 on whether or not the Democrats were going to somehow have a chance in taking the House. And, look, it's too close to call at this point, even though this Connor Lamb is being an inconsiderate little brat and deciding to go ahead and claim victory, even though there's, what, like 500 votes separating them, okay, first and foremost, and there's over 1,000 absentee ballots left that have not been accounted for. Okay, and most of those absentee ballots, with all due respect, come from Rick Saccone's area. Easter's coming. That means friends and family, Easter egg hunting, and a delicious holiday meal. Whether you need two dozen eggs or 12 dozen, Smart and Final has the perfect pack. Hop in for a huge selection of candy, baskets, and ham, with prices up to 25% lower than supermarkets. This weekend only, 24 packs of Modelo, Corona, Heineken, or Pacifico beer are $18.99 plus CRV with $25 purchase. Limit to drink responsibly. Come in or visit SmartAndFinal.com for delivery. Smart and Final. So, uh, you know, I thought it was a rather uncouth of this so-called moderate Democrat asshole, Connor Lamb. I mean, look, I, I look, I, I love the military, okay? And I know this asshole, uh, Connor Lamb, likes to shove this idea that I was a Marine. I was a Marine out there during the time of this and time of that. Have you read his bio? This guy was a JAG. He worked in JAG. He was prosecuting Marines. This is a prosecutor. He was prosecuting Marines in Okinawa that happened to have uh, uh, gotten a little bit of two boom boom with some of those sucky sucky broads out there, all right? That's what he did. I mean, listen, if you're going to be touting a military career, I would like anybody who's going to be in politics touting a military career, be precise in what exactly you did. 
because I, I mean they were trying to tout as if this guy Connor Lamb, all right, was, was uh, some kind of a Rambo, you know, like like he was a gunny or something. I mean, like he was some badass. Here he was. He, he did not. That's why. He, that's why he looks like some fruit bowl. That's why he looks. He doesn't look like a marine that's seen the shit. Excuse my French. He doesn't look like a marine that's seen anything. He's like, hi, I'm Connor Lamb. I mean, you can just tell I'm such a feminine fruit bowl just by my, by what my parents name me. My my parents name me Connor, Connor Lamb because that's all I am. I'm I'm sweet as a little lamb. Anyway, whether or not Connor Lamb takes this election or not, it's a nothing burger, and no Democrat should be considering this some kind of a signal for the 2018 elections, okay? Because lest we forget, Connor Lamb is trying to play this balancing act on him not necessarily being a progressive Democrat. He's one of these so-called center-left Democrats, and he, that's what he campaigned on. He's pro-gun, he's anti-abortion, supposedly. He's renounced and denounced Nancy Pelosi. He's claimed that he will not vote for her if they take over the House for Speaker of the House. Uh, he's not into this so-called uh, uh, racial politics. And he said today that he's willing to work with anybody as long as uh, as long as it's for America. So if these people in Pennsylvania hold this Connor Lamb's feet to the fire, then maybe they, they're going to get a center-left candidate that could potentially not be a partisan, progressive, racial politic asshole and maybe actually do something. And look, you Democrats, lest we forget, because Can- uh, Connor Lamb is center-left, that means that this progressive garbage that you're shoving down everybody's throat does not work. People do not want it. They don't want racial politics. They don't want, uh, you know, all this divisive crap that, that that's, we, we come to know and love on the progressive movement of the Democrats. So if anything, this should show you Democrats that if you don't move more to the center, then, the, then you have left the rest of the country. You are not in the mindset of the rest of the country. That's why I keep saying, folks, take a look at the modern Democratic Party right now. They are anti-American trash. And I'm not just saying that because I don't like their politics. I'm saying that based upon their actions. I'm willing to give Democrats any benefit of the doubt if they pass something that actually benefits the country. They have done nothing. They got into goddamn White House, and they took over the government in 2009, and what did they do? They did nothing! They bailed out the banks. They bailed out Wall Street. They gave an open season giveaway of our tax dollars to everyone who donated to Barack Obama's campaign contribution account and the Democrats' campaign contribution account in stimulus package, too. I swear to God, folks, that's why you have so many people that are loyal to Obama, that are loyal to the Democrats, because they got paid during that open season, that open raid on our tax system. Lest we forget that Barack Obama accumulated $10 trillion in debt. That is more debt than all presidents before Obama combined. And where did all that money go? Where did all the money go? Well, you had to have been chummy with the Democrats or Obama, or you would have had to have donated to their campaign to get any piece of that. This dumb asshole that everybody puts on a pedestal as some kind of a major scientist, Elon Musk, which is nothing more than some asshole who helped create PayPal, okay? Let's, let's just, I, I want to keep reiterating this if we're talking about science here, all right? Elon Musk is not a scientist, all right? He helped create PayPal, okay? And secondly, the whole reason why he has all this money to so-called go into these ridiculous R&D ideas of Hyperloops and SpaceX and Tesla cars and flamethrowers and batteries is because Barack Obama gave him $4 billion of our tax money. 
$4 billion. And you know something? Elon Musk isn't even a goddamn American. That's what pisses me off even more. This guy, he went from South Africa, which we're going to talk about South Africa later, by the way. He went from South Africa, realized it was a shithole. Went from South Africa to Canada, realized that was a shit ice hole. Went from Canada to America, and guess what? Guess what? Four billion dollars that goddamn Obama gave this piece of trash. And he makes me sick. I spit on Elon Musk. And if he's still with Amanda Heard, I hope Amanda Heard eats this stupid, dumb, chia pet for hair having piece of crap's heart out. I hope she does to him what she did to Johnny Depp, boy. I, hope, I swear to God, I do not like Elon Musk. He is the fakest of fakes. And that just, I guess that's what's in vogue in today's society, isn't it? Fake scientists? I mean, I'm telling you right now, Elon Musk is not a scientist. He's a phony. He's a fake. And he's using our goddamn money to do it. Neil Tyson Degrassi, once again, what the hell has he done? He's done nothing. I challenged him on Twitter, and he tweeted me back before Twitter banned me for life for inventing the term pothole. He tweeted me back saying, oh, well, if you've not heard of me, take a look at my research papers on Google document, whatever, Google research, but whatever the crap he said. Oh, you wrote some papers. Uh, you wrote some mumbo jumbo, and that's supposed to make you some brilliant scientist? I remember scientists used to actually have to go through a scientific method and actually demonstrate through experimentation their theories to reach a hypothesis, to come to a conclusion. They're not doing that no more. They ain't doing that no more. No, oh, I'm going to write a couple of papers and, and shit papers out like it's going out of style with a bunch of cosmic mumbo-jumbo. And now, because I'm black, and let's be honest, that's because that's, that's the reason why Neil Tyson Degrassi is a goddamn uh, a scientist, and that's why everybody's giving him the props. He's black, just like we elected uh, Barack Obama. You know? Oh, look, it's, it's, it's a black president. Look, I, and look, I was there. I was there in 2008. White folks and everybody was had this mindset that it's about that time to have a black president. And maybe after this black president's elected, racism will be no more. Europe will love us. The world will come together. We're in harmony because we now have a black president. Folks, you morons in 2008 know who you are. And you know who you are. And you know that was the reason you voted for him. Take a look at the consequence for that stupidity. Barack Obama threw America back 50, 60 years in every aspect possible, politically, economically, socially, racially. That's what I'm telling you, folks. That's why people like Neil Tyson Degrassi, because he's a pompous-sounding, articulate black man with a half ass afro and a fucking fat beer gut, and he comes out pretending like he knows what he's saying, but he doesn't even know what the hell he's saying. Look, I don't mean to go off on a rant here on Neil Tyson Degrassi, but look, I've done my research on this guy. This guy literally has like a – he. I hate to keep saying this because people don't believe me, but he literally majored in his bachelor's when – he, when he got his bachelor's, he majored in Caribbean ballroom dancing. I'm not joking. Caribbean ballroom dancing, okay? It wasn't until he got to his master's degree in which he decided, you know what, astronomy, that sounds like, or astrophysics, you know, something that doesn't have to be proven. All you have to learn is the stupid vocabulary, and then, oh, I'm a scientist. I'm a that's what I am. I'm a scientist now because, oh, I've got a degree that says I'm an astrophysicist. Give me a freaking break. And look, let me tell you something. Let me, let me show you something. For all you people that make fun of me, that, that think that, you know, I really don't think that we've been that far into space, and I don't think we've been on the moon and that sort of thing. Here's the Washington Post, okay, folks? And look, I'm going to gab this right now. I'm just going to post it. 
Because, I mean, this should just slap you morons in the face that, oh, I think Neil Tyson DeGrasse is the fucking greatest uh, goddamn scientist ever uh, since sliced bread, for Christ's sake. This guy's great. I love him. Anything he says, uh, it's verbatim. He's a scientist. He should know what he's talking about. Here it is, right here. Washington Post, why Neil DeGrasse Tyson failed to prove Earth isn't flat. I'm not joking. Here it is right here. Washington goddamn post. I just posted it right there. I just posted it right there. Now, I'm not saying the world is flat. Believe me. But what the article says is that this idiot has been so inconsistent, has been so goddamn inconsistent about his perception of the earth, his perception of space, his perception of whatever the hell astrophysics is, that he's contradicted himself on a consistent basis, giving fodder to people who believe that the Earth is flat. You understand? Because lest we forget, this asshole's supposed to be some badass scientist. Have you ever heard this guy in a lecture? I mean, I've never heard so much, somebody so pompous in my life. I swear to God, if I didn't know who this dude was, and I was in a lecture with this guy, and the way he talks to the people that he's lecturing to, I would get up and slap him upside his fat face. I'm not even joking around. And you see, that's the point I'm trying to make here. I'm not trying to say that the earth is flat, so all you morons don't. I'm not saying that. This is a Washington Post article titled, Why Neil deGrasse Tyson Failed to Prove Earth Isn't Flat. And, 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 and the, the blurb is, we can't even believe we're writing this. And you want to know why? Because they're highlighting the incompetence of this stupid affirmative action scientist. All right? And somebody needs to call him out. Because he doesn't science. He doesn't even know science. That's why this is, this is the liberal Washington Post. It's right there, folks. I'm sorry it's behind a paywall, but there it is. All right? I've read the article. I've read it. All right? And, and the article is not saying they believe the earth is flat. They're saying that his interpretation of what earth is, space is, the moon is, everything contradicts. I mean, he's just a contradiction. He's, he's a walking bunch of bullshit is what they're saying, man. All right? Now, I am not saying the world is flat. You idiots on Gab, shut your goddamn ass. I'm not saying that, you moron. I'm saying that the people even in the Washington Post can no longer say, yeah, you know what? This affirmative action black scientist, he knows what he's talking about. I mean, not even Washington Post can go along with the charade anymore, you know? I'm not, they can't even go like, like, man, I can't keep going on with this affirmative action scientist. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to this guy. It's a great article. I strongly advise everybody to read it if you can. All right? I strongly advise everybody to read it if you can. But even the liberal Washington Post is discrediting old uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson because he's an affirmative action fake scientist. I'm just saying. All right, I'm not telling anybody to believe anything, but I am telling you to question all these mouthpieces that you're just supposed to give authority to when it comes to science or whatever the hell else it could be. Anyway, let me move on. I didn't mean to get off on that soliloquy. I just don't like, I don't like him, all right? I don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson. I've been saying this for years. You can go back to the archive, folks. I've been saying he was an affirmative action scientist, okay? He was a, an affirmative action scientist, and I'm glad the Washington Post, a liberal rag who desecrates our president, I am glad at least they are articulating that this is an idiot, all right? This is a moron. And you know what? I'm glad the Washington Post wrote that piece. Because it's this stupid, dumb, affirmative action scientist that's given fodder to all these ridiculous ideas. Jesus Christ. Anyway, look, I, I'm getting off Keister. We're also going to talk a little bit about in the third hour, Theresa May gives Putin a 24-hour notice. Uh, sh shut up, May. Shut up, May. You can't even deal with Brexit. 
Shut up! You're going to deal with Pooty Poo, for Christ's sake, man. Get the get out of here! Can you all remove May already out there in the UK? I mean, how is there still a functioning government with this incompetent dunce? Can somebody explain this to me? I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. You know, I told you that when this stupid old hag came in as prime minister, that this broad was going to do nothing but kick the can down the road with Brexit. And now, folks, I mean, I hate to bring this up, uh, they're talking about a second referendum vote to overturn Brexit now, huh? Oh! I told you, man! I told all of you! But Theresa May, let's get back to Pooty Poo here, gives Putin a 24-hour notice after two ex-spies are poisoned with nerve agents in the UK. And of course, nothing happened. So what did May do? She just copied what this idiot Obama did when he was supposedly pressured to do something about the meddling of Russian elections, and he just expelled some diplomats. And that's what this dumb broad did. And you know something? I want to be honest with you. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail of this in the third hour, but I personally believe that people within the government itself allowed the agents or whoever to plant these nerve agents that are in powdered form that were apparently delivered in some kind of letter context. Uh, And not to mention to know where these ex-spies are at And in my personal opinion, I think that the U.K. is complicit in this. And the reason I say that the U.K. is complicit in this is because right now we've got two conservative girls. Not that I agree with them wholeheartedly. I'm talking about uh, Laura Southern and uh, what was that, that Petty Boner, that broad Petty Boner, I forgot her name, but Petty Boner. They They were just trying to go into the U.K. legally. And because they're on a list of, I guess, right-wing vocalized personalities, they are now being detained, and they're still being detained out there in the U.K. Okay, They're being detained right now. And I'm going to be honest, Laura Southern hasn't done a goddamn thing except, you know, put cameras in people's faces and get assaulted for a lot of stuff. Same thing with the uh, Petty Bone. She's, she went from a Twitter uh, person to, I don't know, I guess some kind of an advocate. She's going out to protest, etc. And these two women are being detained as they come into the country, and yet these are just two women. These are two conservative women. And yet Jehudis can come in like it's no big deal. Russians obviously can come in and out at no big deal. I mean, supposedly this is supposed to be the superior big brother state. They've got cameras on every corner. You know, I mean, that's why the police don't even hang out, because there's cameras everywhere. And you mean to tell me that these two ex-spies, these these two Russian ex-spies, were just found out and miraculously sent this package or letter and delivered this nerve agent without the U.K. knowing. And I told you the first uh, victim, the first U.K. uh, uh, spy, the ex-Russian spy victim, his daughter was also a victim as well. This person was connected to the Fusion GPS Russian dossier. And lest we forget, folks, who comprised the Russian dossier? Christopher Steele. Christopher Steele was MI6, all right, the equivalent of the CIA in England. And Christopher Steele utilized his context because his specialty in MI6 was Russia. He utilized his uh, his contacts in Russia to compile this dossier, so to speak. And if he utilized, and look, there is a connection with the first guy and the Russian dossier. If there is a connection with the second guy, then in my personal opinion, I think it's the English that killed these two sons of bitches. Because possibly, I'm starting to believe now, that the English may have had something to do with the Russian dossier in an attempt to thwart uh, Donald Trump from being president. Because lest we forget, Barack Obama was 
telling the UK that they were going to have to be last in the queue if they didn't vote for Brexit, or if they if they if they, if they, if they voted for Brexit. Excuse me. And since the people didn't and they wanted to get the hell out of there, it made Dave Cameron look like a moron, and they brought in this idiot Theresa May. Now, Theresa May, in my opinion, just looks like some moron who does what she's told. She has no vision. She's, she's a complete idiot. You could tell that she's, she's literally kind of being told what to do. She's literally having to be told what to do. And in my personal view, I think that in this transition, they did not want any more breakup of the European Union, the institution of the United Nations, the uh, tentacles of these foreign institutions on the United States. And Trump represented a major, a major wrench in the two or three hundred years that these people have been trying to build this centralization of global power. And that's why, if you want my opinion, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm getting in-depth to it here is because maybe I won't get around to it in the third hour, but I personally am starting to figure out that it could be the U.K. that could have been the culprit. And, it, I mean, you can't get any more connection than Christopher Steele, who's XMI6, and just like any agent of a agency of that capacity – just like if you were tapped to be in the CIA, you're never an ex-CIA. You're always a part of the CIA. And as far as I'm concerned, folks, Britain has their whole goddamn country on lockdown in every capacity. They've got their people under surveillance. They've got everybody disarmed. They, they, it's literally a big brother police state. Now they're monitoring their internet connections. So you you can't even do things on the internet without the threat of potentially having police come to your door. And if you don't believe me, try to say something against Sharia law in the UK. I bet you won't. Try to say something. I'm not kidding. This is where it's coming down to. And you mean to tell me that some Ruski spies found out where these ex Ruski spies are? Remember, they're in the U.K. because the U.K. is supposed to be protecting these ex-U.K. spies. And they found their locations, and then they delivered these nerve agents. How the hell did they get the nerve agents into the country? It's stupid, man. And look, I'm going to move on from this right after I say this. Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labor Party, was recently outed as an agent of the Soviet Union. Does everybody not forget that? That that came out, what, two or three weeks ago, that he was a paid agent, a working agent for the Soviet Union, while he was conducting himself in English politics. Now, if the Soviets have that kind of connections into the internal governmental workings of the UK, then why is it out of the question for these same people that were once on the payroll of Russia to continue to do favors for Russia. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Y'all can, you know, figure out what you need to figure out with that. But come on, man, you know, give me a break. Give me a break. It's all starting to come clear as far as I'm concerned. And if you want my opinion, I think these two spies were killed not by Russia. They were killed by the UK. Christopher Steele used, I mean, he admitted Glenn Simpson, the guy who is supposed to be the owner of freaking Fusion GPS, he testified that Christopher Steele utilized Russian assets to compile that dossier. Now, what Russian assets was he using? What, in Russia? And if he was using assets in Russia, that's more than collusion as far as I'm concerned with the Democrats. But let's just say he was utilizing the ex-spies that are within the country. He would be in charge of those if he was MI6. He would be their handlers. Wake up, man. Anyway, uh, then at the third hour, we're also going to talk about how Australia... Australia is considering visas for white South African farmers. And for you folks that are unaware, 
right now there is a I mean, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening, but there is an attempt at white genocide happening right now in South Africa, and it's been announced by the new government that is uh, post-Zuma. Remember, the president, Zuma, was ousted by his own party, uh, the African National Congress. Well, now the new African National Congress has pushed initiatives as white land confiscation and potential white genocide. Now, isn't that great? Isn't that great? You know, and listen, I didn't think apartheid was right. I don't. I personally don't. I think it's horrible. But I've seen pictures of Africa, South Africa, during apartheid, when it was clean, the streets were safe. It, it, you know, it's not, I mean, right now, folks, in South Africa, it's so dangerous. If you walk the streets, you could be killed, especially if you're white or light-complected anything. How did, how did we go from apartheid, in which the apartheid authority didn't have a black genocide, they just separated the blacks from the whites. Y'all remember that? And what brought down apartheid, let's be honest, is the same thing that's bringing down Europe. What brought down apartheid was the fact that because they were living in this kind of apartheid white utopia, they didn't have enough white people that would suffice the jobs that are on the low end of the scale of labor, what are looked down upon as like, you know, low-end jobs. They didn't have enough, so slowly, through an incremental process, they started allowing the blacks to go from their black ghettos that they were subjugated to to come into the white neighborhoods so that they can be employed, so they can make money. And believe it or not, it was that incrementalism of the intermixing of economics is what demised the apartheid and withered it away. Now, at the time, it was a good thing, because remember, Nelson Mandela was the leader of that particular uh, ANC, African National Congress, attempt to overturn apartheid, etc. And remember, Mandela went down as some kind of a Nobel Peace, kind of a you know larger than life guy. He was in jail for 27 years, and you know, oh, he just wanted peace, and he just wanted the intermixing of everybody, and he wanted blacks to have an opportunity, and all all that leftist crap. Well, folks, take a look at the party of Mandela now. They are not only confiscating lands from whites because they feel that they're accorded to because once upon a time they were a part of apartheid, but now you've got black Africans in South Africa calling for white genocide. And I'm talking about politicians that are in the African National Congress that are in the political system of South Africa. They're calling for white genocide now. And this is the consequence of post-apartheid African National Congress Mandela. That's what this is all this is what it's all about. Anyway, thank God to Australia. Because Australia understands, and look, in my personal opinion, Australia is on that teetering pendulum on whether or not they're going to be a full-fledged cuckery type of a freaking country, or they're going to preserve their Australian heritage that they've built throughout the years that they've developed their country. Now, here in the past Obama years, the Australians were trying to adopt what the Europeans were trying to adopt, what Obama was trying to adopt, open borders, let's bring along the refugees, uh, let, let, let's 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 put them into our countries, that sort of thing. And and right now, Australia has a little bit of Jehudis from you know Syria and et cetera because of that policy. But they have since stopped because they have a little bit of a conservative. Uh, I guess I, I guess you could call him a conservative prime minister at this point, Turnbull. But Turnbull, uh, his name says it all. He'll turn bull at any goddamn point. Uh, case in point, he was sitting here hugging and kissing the president, uh, calling, oh, yes, you know, we're 100 years of mates. We're 100 years of mates. And then uh, a day or two later, once uh, Donald Trump started talking about 
uh, tariffs on steel and aluminum, Turnbull turned straight bullshit and said, like, oh, "Yeah, well, we're going to put a we're going to put a, a, a tariff on you. We're going to put a tariff on you to shrimp under the barbie, you cunt." So anyway, regardless, that's been squashed. Turnbull's took it back once again. He's tur- he turned bullshit again, and he took it back. But now Australia's considering visas for the white South African farmers so that if any liberal within the Australian uh, parliament decides that, no, we're not, we're not going to do this, mate, they can say, well, wait a minute. We took in your Jehudis. I mean, why can't we take in a persecuted group of people like South African white farmers that are having their land confiscated? that are being threatened with white genocide. So that's some pretty good news, and I hope that uh, I hope that they mean it. I hope those goddamn kangaroo-banging bastards, those platypus-up-the-ass-having fucks, excuse my French, I'm sorry, I've been drinking a little bit, I, as you can see. Uh, I hope that they take these South Africans in, man, because South Africa is a total, if I could quote the words of my great president, a shithole. I mean, one of the major towns in South Africa, Cape Town, is running out of drinking water, for Christ's sake. Well, I mean, when is day zero? I think it's coming up here next month. Day zero, of course, is the day that they run out of drinking water for the entire town. No, no, but we're not the shithole. Yeah, shut up, for Christ's sake. Anyway, I know I went overboard on that stuff, folks, but it really doesn't matter because let's go ahead and talk about crypto. Now, bloody, bloody red in the crypto markets, folks. And let me tell you, you can thank a cluster F of different reasons for this. I mean, John Oliver, first and foremost, helped continue the contraction that we were having headed into last weekend. Folks, now you've got Google saying that they are going to ban any advertisements relating to Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. And as I've told you about this investment community in cryptocurrency, it's all a bunch of dorks, computer nerds, and neckbeards. And when they hear something like that, oh, my God, Google's not going to accept any more ads for Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. Oh, my God, it's over. i gotta, I got to move my – got to move the cash. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> And this is really the consequence of that, folks. It's, it's just combat, it's just back-to-back bad news that is sticking in the craw of these neckbeards. Now, folks, what has me concerned is that we're not growing. I'm talking the cryptocurrency market is not growing like we should be growing. And the reason is, is because most of the average everyday layman in the world finds it very complicated to even understand what cryptocurrency is. They find it very difficult to understand what a digital wallet is. They find it very hard to understand any of this technical stuff. That's why the majority of the investment community in cryptocurrency are a bunch of neckbeards, dorks, computer nerds, etc. And that's why I'm hope, I sincerely hope that the faster the stock brokerage companies like Robin Hood's doing, I hope that other brokerage houses do the same. When they start integrating cryptocurrency trading with their equities trading is when we're going to finally start seeing people take cryptocurrency serious because when it's on a platform like a stock trading platform, there's no need to understand the complexities of digital wallets and, and, and mining and all that other stuff. All they see is, oh, I can buy this and sell that. I can buy this now and trade this for that. It's all about numbers. It's trading. And the faster that happens, that's when we're going to see an influx of hundreds of billions of dollars that we have never seen before. And a lot of these coins are going to go through the roof. Now, there's a patience. There's a patience time period here that everybody needs to understand because If you take a look at certain coins, for instance, quantum, uh, we noticed in the inner circle that there was a tremendous buy wall and a tremendous sell wall in two different exchanges. 
And what we figured out is that there's a group of people or somebody that is purposely trying to saturate this particular cryptocurrency price downward and slowly skim masses amounts of quantum into their own possession. And the reason is, folks, and as I've stated time and time again, what creates the value in cryptocurrency is technology. It's technology, man. And whether or not the people that are in back of the coin can actually implement what they say in the white paper. And as I've told you, I hate to use quantum as an example again, but this is the coin that has the same type of trajectory as Ethereum had back in April of 2017. And lest we forget, folks, y'all remember 2017 when I started covering this at the beginning of that year? It was a little bit flat. Remember, we saw major contractions in Bitcoin prior to April uh, we saw major contractions in the other coins that were available out here. We didn't see a big influx until the summer and the fall, and the and then once we came into the Christmas time. You understand? And why is that, folks? Because right now, at this point in time, everybody's been post holidays. Everybody's got to pay for you know what they paid for during. Christmas time, during Hanukkah, Hanukkah, and New Year's. And, and you know, these holiday seasons, they don't stop. Remember, we just had we just had uh, Valentine's Day. That cost a pretty, pretty penny. We're going to have Easter, East Star. All right, so, I mean, that's a lot of money that people have to consider in their budget if they want to have a good holiday, especially if they have children, especially if they – uh, have a need to go out and party during those times. And there's a lot of people that live for whatever reason. And not to mention, folks, um, Easter's coming. That means friends and family, Easter egg hunting, and a delicious holiday meal. Whether you need two dozen eggs or 12 dozen, Smart and Final has the perfect pack. Hop in for a huge selection of candy, baskets, and ham, with prices up to 25% lower than supermarkets. This weekend only, 24 packs of Modelo, Corona, Heineken, or Pacifico beer are $18.99 plus CRV with $25 purchase. Limit to drink responsibly. Come in or visit SmartAndFinal.com for delivery. Smart and Final. I think that people need to understand with cryptocurrency that we're having way too many ICOs at this point being developed. And I have to agree with the SEC on this one that ICOs have to be the first thing that have to be regulated. And the reason I say that is because now what we're having is that we have any new money coming into the cryptocurrency market, they're going right into these ICOs, and most of them are scams. Most of them don't even flourish to development. Most of them don't even raise the money that they're trying to seek, and they just take the money and run. And why are people going after these ICOs? Well, because they think buy low, sell high. They think, well, if I get the coin before anybody else gets it, <laughs> I'm an advantage there. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. So I think, in my view, you need to go after what's been around at this point. And everything's on sale. It's like Black Friday right now in the cryptocurrency markets. But I would go with what's been around at this point. I would not, unless you, you see a coin out here that has been developed, that is doing the equivalence of what I, any of these major coins are doing, even if, if they're doing what Quantum's doing, Ethereum's doing. You know, smart contracting, integrating it, the smart contract with the wallet. Uh, a mobile wallet application, which is what Quantum has. Yeah, if you want your Quantum on your uh, your wallet or, or on your phone, excuse me, you can put it on your Android right now and have Quantum in your damn phone. I mean, they're, they're, they're moving faster than anyone out here in the market. And that's where the value is at, folks. Technology, technology, technology is where it's at when it comes to cryptocurrency. And if all a crypto is... It's nothing more than like what a Bitcoin is, which was supposed to be an alternative to fiat, which it's been over-speculated out of that capacity, then there's nothing, there's nothing to it. There's, not, there's no reason to go after it. Speaking of Bitcoin, uh, well, let's talk about the market capitalization right now of the entire market. Now, the last time we talked, folks, the market cap was at about $400 billion. 
little over 400 billion, I think 410 billion, I think it was. Folks, right now, the market cap of the entire cryptocurrency market is $332 billion. That's a major, major decrease. Lots of people pulling out their money, and I just described a lot of reasons why. Once again, John Oliver claiming that Bitcoin is a scam or it's gambling. Same thing with Google banning any kind of advertisements of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. I mean, this is, this is really going to hurt the market. That's why if you're in cryptocurrency and if you have the ability to do it, give some cryptocurrency away to somebody. You know, why don't you Google paper cryptocurrency wallets? All right, and, and, and give a paper wallet of like 10 bucks of whatever to people and say, hey, look, here's 10 bucks, but you got to learn how to uh, get it. And there's directions on it and everything. I mean, we need as many people as we possibly can into cryptocurrency as possible, folks. You understand? We need to make it easier. We need to show people that, look, this is real cash. They're utilizing this to exchange goods and services in, the, in parts of the world out here. So anyway, let me continue going, man, because, uh, I mean, I'm, of course, running running low on time once again. Anyway, we are now in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, and, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Before we get started on anything else, I'd like to remind everybody to please spread this show link around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, and it is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Hey, every one of my episodes are time-dated and stamped on that website. So you can look back in that archive, and there's almost 2,000 goddamn hours of broadcast right there, baby. It's never-ending content. man. I mean, I'm telling you, you could get lost looking up stuff about this broadcast, baby. I mean, we've been on here for 10 years. Ha, 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 ha. Ten years, baby. And we're going to go another 25, 30 more, baby. I'm telling you that right now. I'm going full throttle. And uh, by the way, if you have not done so, please follow me on the last bastion of freedom of speech in social media today. And I'm talking about Gab, folks. All right, Gab, you can type in your browser and get there right now by typing in gab.ai. And once you get there, you can follow me under the name Politics Ghost, all right? All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost is the name to follow. And, of course, I want to say what's going on to the True Capitalist Radio chat room. What's going on? I see you, baby. What's up, man? (laughs) If you want to be a part of the chat room. (laughs) Something caught in my throat. Ugh. Sorry, I'm having too many. I'm having too much liquor. I'm having too much liquor. As you can see, folks, I'm doing love on the rocks because it feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> and you know that's kind of uh, you know when you when you when you take like. Uh, Alcohol like that. It kind of makes your throat a little raw. So I guess what we're going to do before we get on with the broadcast is we're going to go ahead and make this a a decent hump day edition of the True Capitalist Radio with more beer. Jesus Christ, I feel like coughing. (laughs) We need more beer. What is this? Freaking cans engineered? God damn it. All right. My apologies, folks. And shut up. It's not the butter. Shut up. 
All right? Anyway, look, if you want to be a part of the True Capitalist Radio chat room, go to my Gab. Check out my Gab right now. All right? And hit the subscribe button for premium content. All right? Hit the subscribe button for premium content. And once you do, all you have to do is give me a private message on my Gab account and give me your Discord chat name, and I will give you an exclusive invitation to the True Capitalist Radio chat room. All right? It's as simple as that. And if you don't have a Gab account, then I strongly advise you to do so. I mean, they are censoring everywhere, and if you want some place where you can air out whatever it is that you want to air out, if you want a true social media with, that's freedom of speech out here, then get a Gab account. It's free, for Christ's sake. I'm serious, man. And look, Gab's not paying me to say that. The only reason I'm promoting Gab is because of this. There's no advertisers on Gab, all right? As a matter of fact, Gab was created with the intention of promoting content creators. So if you have a blog, or if if you uh, repost news, or if you have some good quips, some good tweets, or whatever the case might be, this is the platform for you, because you can post whatever the hell you want to post, and it's freedom of goddamn speech! No censorship, because there's no advertisers! And that's what I love about Gab, man. They, they care more about the people creating the content for the site than actually the idiot advertisers, for Christ's sake. So cheers to that. Once again, if you want to be a part of the True Capitalist Radio chat room, go to the Gab and hit the subscribe button, all right, for premium content. And then, of course, PM me, private message me on Gab, your goddamn, uh, your, your Discord name. Simple as that. Just it, it, your Discord name. Anyway, folks, uh, I was going to do some rundown of the cryptocurrencies, but everything is red. It is red. It is bloody as hell out here. And there's no reason to read off the obvious. So all I'm going to say is this. Everything is on sale. It's a Black Friday-like sale in the cryptocurrency markets right now. And what I'd like for people to understand is that long-term investment reigns supreme. All right? Buy and hold and kick back, give it a year, and see what happens. I'm telling you, that's what happened to everybody that heeded my call back in April of 2017. They got in at Ethereum at $40. They got in at Bitcoin when it was at $1,000. They got in at Dash when it was $60. They got in at Zcash when it was at about $50. I mean, do you understand me? Just telling you, all right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and just say everything's fine in the crypto markets. You understood my explanation on why exactly we're seeing so much contraction in the market. We got neckbeards. We got computer dorks. We got nerds. They heard bad news. I mean, you know, John Oliver, you know, bashing, you know, what, why does, what interest does John Oliver have to bash Bitcoin other than, to try to prevent folks from being wealthy. I mean, that's all it is. And the same thing with Google. They don't want anybody else having the wealth. That's what this is all about. That's why they want to stop you. And that's why we can't allow them to stop us in this cryptocurrency movement. We are nullifying the central banking system. I mean, don't you understand that? I mean, at the very least... If you don't like the central banks, you should at least be participating in this goddamn cryptocurrency movement, for heaven's sake. And there's money involved in it, baby. We've all made money in the inner circle, and there's many, many more, much, much more money to come, baby. Now, I do want to cover the stocks because the stocks have gone down, and the reason they've gone down is for a couple of reasons. Retail sales have slid in the past three months, okay? And that means that after Christmas, everybody spent their wad. That's why I talked about that in the cryptocurrency segment, was that you had a lot of people out here that have spent their wad in Christmas, New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, you got Easter coming up, this and that. And this is why you have this bad number coming out from the retail sector, all right? They they wasn't very good retail sales this past month, and that's what really spooked the markets. And aside from that, 
Larry Kudrow, Larry Kudlow, excuse me, is going to be the replacement of the Goldman Sachs globalist Gary Cohn, who left the White House economic uh, top economic advisor position because he was in disagreement with Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminum. He's going to bring in Larry Kudlow, and I guess that spooked the markets as well because Larry Kudlow had been talking about things of this capacity for years on CNBC. As a matter of fact, I believe he's one of the top executives at CNBC, and uh, he also had a show where he would give his insight on the fact that the reason America is getting killed is because we've lost our means of production, we've lost manufacturing, and all we've become is nothing more than a consumption hole. And whose goods are we consuming? We're consuming everybody else in the international community's goods except our own. And that's what Donald Trump is going to change. And I hope that uh, Larry Kudlow continues that sentiment because I like where this is going. All right? I like where this is goddamn going, baby. Anyway, let's get to the Dow Jones Industrials. This is why we say, we saw a little bit of a spook out in the market because of these factors. So let's take a look at it. Dow Jones is down 248.91 points, a percentage decrease of 1% today, closing out the Dow at 24,758.12 points for the S&P, or excuse me, for the Dow Jones Industrial, excuse me. The S&P 500 it was also down today, 15.83 points. A percentage decrease of 0.57%, closing out the S&P at 2,749.48 points for the S&P 500. We've got the NASDAQ. It's also down 14.20 points, a percentage decrease of 0.19%, closing out the NASDAQ at 7,496.81 points for the NASDAQ composite. Let's go ahead and get to the commodities, folks. And this is another thing that could be draining people out of their pocketbooks, which we've been talking about for the past several months, the increase in gas prices. What I've been saying, folks, have you all been feeling it lately? The increases in gas prices could be also another factor that's kind of digging in to consumer sentiment. And it happens on a variety of different levels. Remember, when I was broadcasting at one point, Barrels of oil were as high as about $120, $120 a barrel. Not only is that going to throw a wrench into economy because people aren't going to go to the stores and pay for gas, but that's going to increase the price of goods because goods have to get from point A to point B. And if we get to $120 gallon again, we're going to see an increased raise in all goods because of that factor. Always remember that. Always remember. If we see a massive increase in crude oil, that it's definitely going to hit every consuming product that is on our shelves. It's going to affect the shipping costs. It's going to affect a lot of things, folks. So we always should keep our eye on the energy prices, and that's why I cover it. Let's get to it now. WTI sweet crude is up again, 11 cents, a percentage increase of 0.18%, closing out WTI at $61.07 per barrel of WTI sweet crude. We've got Brent crude also up today, 10 cents, a percentage increase of 0.15%, closing out Brent crude at $64.99 per barrel of Brent crude oil. We've got gasoline also up 0.12%. Natural gas is up 0.33%. And heating oil continues to go up because of the Nor'easter. It is up 0.05%. Let's get to the metals, shall we? The metals! Let's get to the goddamn metals! We've got gold up today, 20 cents, a percentage increase of 0.02%, closing out gold at $1,325.80 per troy ounce of gold. We've got silver up two cents, a percentage increase of 0.11%, closing out silver at $16.56 per troy ounce of silver. We've got cotton down today, 0.11%. We've got platinum up 0.23%. Let's get to agriculture, shall we, folks? Now, 
looks like we're seeing a lot of green because we're seeing a lot of red in equities. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Grains, corn up 0.13% for corn. Wheat is up 0.51%. Oats is up 0.10%. Rup rice is up 0.32%. Soybean is up 0.12%. Soybean oil is unchanged today, and canola is down 0.10%. Let's get to the softs. Cocoa continues to go up the roof. Cocoa is going loco. I mean, how high can cocoa go? Seriously. Cocoa is up almost another percent today. It is up 0.95%. Good God. Let's get to coffee, shall we? Hey, dude, you know, just don't talk to me. You know? Don't talk to me unless I have my coffee, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, give me a freaking break. Anyway, coffee is down 0.41%. Sugar is up 1.11% increase for sugar. Orange juice is up 1.01%. Cotton is up 0.55%. Lumber is down 0.16%. Rubber is down 0.92%. And ethanol is down 0.39%. Let's get to livestock, shall we? Live cattle is up 0.09%. Cattle feeder is up 0.30%. And before we get to lean hog, once again, if you're out there in a shopping mall, you're out there in a grocery store, and you see these fat, jelly-ass, gigantuan, Snorlax assholes hovering around in a hover round, all you've got to do, don't confront them, don't talk garbage to them, just pass by them and say, Hambo. We're going to bring back the Hambone Movement, boy. If you could put it on video and put it on YouTube, that'd be great. Go viral. It's the Hambone Challenge, baby. The Hambone Challenge. Hambone. When you see a fat, jelly-ass, Snorlax son of a bitch with cellulite dripping off their ears and their ass and they're riding around in a goddamn hunt around, go up to them and just pass by them. Hambone, fat, greasy ass, smelly ass, stinky hambone. I'm serious. Anyway, sorry. Lean hogs are up today, folks. 1.13% increase on the day, and that, my friends, is the markets for your ass, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, I have been drinking prior to the broadcast. I was sitting in the True Capitalist radio chat room chatting with everybody before the broadcast, having a pretty good conversation, drinking some uh, single malt uh, Glenfiddich, aged 15 years, double cask. So, uh, you know, my, my throat's a little raw from doing that, and that's why, you know, it sounded like I was having some kind of a coronary attack in the middle of the goddamn market. So now I've got some beer, all right? I just poured me a beer, so let me go ahead and uh, say, first of all, cheers to the inner circle. I want to say cheers to the true capitalist radio chat room. Cheers to the capitalist army throughout the world. And I want to say cheers to the greatest president in American history, the modern-day George Washington himself, the man who has led the capitalist revolution into taking over state power. I'm talking about Donald Trump. Thank you, Mr. President. And let me tell you, this is what keeps me going. You, you, sir, every time I see how stress-resilient you are, how you brush your shoulders off, of everything that comes on your way, you, sir, are an inspiration to me. You're an inspiration to all capitalists. And I want to say cheers to Donald Trump, man. Cheers. Ah. And I'll go ahead and finish this. Love on the rocks. Let me go ahead and finish it. Ah. All right. Feel a little loose, baby. Feel a little loose. <laughs> Woo! All right. Now I'm ready for some goddamn shout-outs, all right? Now I'm ready. You see, this has been my problem. I should have had drinks before doing this, 
so I can be as stress resilient as the greatest president in American history, Donald Trump. I'm going to brush my shoulders off with this. Because I'm before I do it, let me, let me let me chug this beer here for Christ's sake. I can already see these people in the damn chat room saying, "Oh yeah, I go ta, <laughs> oh yeah." <laughs> Good God, let me chug this beer. Ah, you know what time it is? More beer! More beer! For Christ's sake! Goddamn right, boy. More goddamn beer. Getting filled with piss and fury, boy, like a man. Like a masculine man. How do you feminists like that? Huh? I'm drinking like a man. All right? I'm spitting like a man. Puh, puh. I'm spitting like a man. All right? Here, I'm, here, I'm farting like a man. Here, I'm, I'm farting like a man. Yeah, you hear that? Piece of crap. Anyway, let me continue. And shut up, all you people in the chat room saying, Virgin, Virgin, shut up! Anyway, folks, look. We are now going to go into some chat room shout-outs, I guess. I guess it's about that time. But before we do, let's just go ahead and... uh, Let's head into the voice chat. Let's head into the voice chat to see what everybody in the True Capitalist Radio chat room is doing. All right, now, I can assure you, folks, there are some really serious people in the True Capitalist Radio chat room. We have really good political debates. Not everybody's a tard. Not everybody's a tard. I promise you. I swear. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's go put on the voice chat and let's see what we have to say. I mean, can you guys come up with something here? Come on, something, something. in there. I'm not even kidding. All right? I'm not kidding. I I know it sounds like digital AIDS. It's not, all right? I'm not joking. Anyway, with that being said, uh, do we have any goddamn chat room shout-outs to be had, Engineer? All right. Well, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and take some chat room shout-outs right now. What do we got here? We got one fork for Pi Day. One fork for Pi Day, you fat asshole. We've got 76-year-old potato PC died, LOL. 76-year-old potato PC died. (laughs) I'm not, no comment. We got cash money in the house. Alaska Air Captain Cosby, whatever the hell that means. Alex P. Nick, uh, no, I'm not saying that, you stupid, dumb asshole. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make me racist. I'm not racist. I'm a melting pot of friendship, and everybody knows it, so shut up. We got Andrew uh, in the house. Bill Bill Nye, get Bill Nye's ass out of here. Nobody wants to see that fake scientist. Get him out of here. Put him in the woodshed, boy. We've got Celestia is a swan. We've got Celexa. Uh, We've got uh, uh, David Camera Hog. Yeah, no kidding, David Camera Hog, for Christ's sake. We've got uh, David Hader, dead by the way, whatever the hell that means. Uh, We got Distillin' in real life Tard Wrangler. All right. Donnie Jr. Divorce LOL. Donnie Jr. isn't getting a divorce. Shut up. Don't you dare. Don't, don't. Don't go there. We've got Drew P. Wang. Drew P. 
went, you son of a... from the bottom. Screw you, assholes. What's up, Spectre? What's going on? You can't get to heaven in a hawking chair. Oh, man. Come on! Come on! Year two of White House walkout, whatever the hell that means. Art of the deal, though. Art of the deal, though. Shut up! You gay bastards! Making me say the screwy crap! Part of the deal, don't shut up, man. Why do y'all make me say this garbage, man? Why? Seriously, man, why? Give me the mic. Jesus Christ, man. Good God. Who else? We got Tesla Cyberheart. What's going on, man? We got TCR Mercenary. Talking wheelchair for sale. Oh, man, good God. You're lucky I don't care about Stephen Hawking too much, for heaven's sake. We got Stephen Hawking's ghost. Oh, shut up. Stagio in the house. Spixmo Mylon. Spixmo Mylon? I don't, I don't understand what the hell that means. We got Spanzer in the house. Soggy Taters. Sadiq Khan for Texas. Shut up! I don't even know how Sadiq Khan got into Texas, boy. They snuck his kebab ass in here. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. Jesus Christ, man. We got R.I.P. Microsoft Sam pulling the plug on Ghosty. Yeah, shut up, you stupid moron. Pope Poop Tickler, the some garbage. I don't, I don't read Roman numeral, boy. We've got pillow talk for boomers. <laughs> Jesus. Who is that? Is that Andrew Anglin? Is that who it is? Is that Chris? I can't do shit well, can't well. Who is that? Good God, man. Give me the mic. Is that Chris? I can't do shit well. Is that who that is? Who donated him a goddamn entrance into the True Capitalist Radio Chat? Or is that Andrew Anglin? Who is that? Who is it? Who else do we have here, for Christ's sake? Put that asshole in the woodshed. We've got no wheelchair ramps to heaven. Oh, oh good God, man. This is cold, man. You guys are cold, baby. I'm look. I'm no fan of Stephen Hawking, but good God. Oh my God. Neil DeGrasse Tyson's in here. I doubt that son of a bitch is in here. I guarantee you, he wouldn't be in here. He'd be out there uh, sexually harassing somebody, right? Isn't that what he's alleged of? I don't know. I may be wrong. I don't know. It's my opinion. He probably did. I mean, Caribbean ballroom dancing. Get the hell out of here. Who else do we have here? We got Mummy Yummy Lemons. Uh, we've got BN King. Uh, we've got, uh, who else we got? We got, we got uh, Hawking EXE has stopped working. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Good God. Hawking has logged off. Hawking blue screen of death, LOL. I mean, good, this is horrible. 
This is horrible. All right, that's enough. All right, you know what? God damn it. Implement chat room martial law on these freaks, man. Implement chat room martial law, for Christ's sake. Good God. All right, look, we're going to go ahead. I, I mean, no, I don't, I don't even know how to describe chat, that chat room crap. But we're going to go ahead and take some gab shout-outs. And, of course, if you don't know how to get a gab shout-out or want one live on the broadcast right near your now, all you got to do is go to my gab account right now and like the post that states live. True Capitalist Radio is now live. Listen in if you like that post. That states live. True Capitalist Radio is now live. Listen in. I will give you a gab shout out live right here on the broadcast, right here and now. Now, engineer, do we have any gab shout outs to be had? <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get to some gab shout outs right now. <laughs> All right, who do we got here? We got Spectre Crimson. Uh, we got Santa Ana did nothing wrong. Yeah, shut up, you stupid moron. All right, I know what you're trying to get me to do. You're trying to goat me into talking garbage. Let me tell you, I know each and every one of you finger-banging, flapping your fat Cheeto-stained finger on the keyboard autist would not dare come down to Texas and say that garbage out here. I guarantee you that wouldn't come out of your suck hole if you were out here in Texas, boy. Hi, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda person, and recently we've been doing random acts of helpfulness, like repairing a family's home after a water leak, helping pay for a wedding, and surprising a deserving child with a birthday party at the L.A. Zoo. And during the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event, we can help you too with a great deal on an award-winning Honda, like the all-new and completely redesigned Accord, the 2018 North American Car of the Year. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you, and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know. Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet of fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet of fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal only 18 days until the first of the month well you know what that ain't gonna get me pissed off anymore boy <laughs> you want to know why baby hey did y'all see that video i gabbed i mean go scroll down a little bit there's it's uh it's it's one one two three four five six six gabs down and it's of a uh, food stamp collector who is expecting to get some food stamp money in a food stamp card. Instead, got herself a uh, box of food that she's complaining about. Here, listen to her for real, one second. You got to hear her complain about the food box that she's getting out of our tax dollars for free. All right. So if you're going to celebrate this, well, then by all means, go ahead. You're getting the minimum of minimum. Take a look at how the ghetto is reacting to Trump's food boxes. And I'm loving every minute of it. Go ahead. Put it on, engineer. Put it on. Okay, y'all. Um, I got a box today. It came today. Uh, this is some of the uh, – this is the food that Trump um, is going to deliver to us, y'all. Look at this here. Okay. This is the food box that, and it's going to come in this big style phone box, y'all. Look. Look at this shit. Trump is not lying. Look at this. Check this out, y'all. Look at our biscuit. Look at our biscuit. We got... <laughs> Uh, Trump gave us some goddamn fucking, uh, what's that supposed to be? Um, barbecue, uh, pork, ribs, and these is the biscuits. Hey, y'all, take the biscuits out. Look at the biscuits. See the biscuits? You know what I'm saying? You ain't doing me no goddamn favor. You could have kept all this shit in this box. I ain't lying. And our food gonna come from UPS. We gonna get our shit delivered in the mail. <laughs> Look at 
eat that biscuit. Hey, can somebody call Trump and tell him that? Ask him why the fuck our biscuits so goddamn hard. Look at this shit. Ain't nobody on We gonna be there. Easy over now. People gonna be easy over. Man, did you hear she said, man, people gonna be Ethiopian now, man. Man, you could have kept this, man. I don't want it, baby. I don't want it, no. I don't want none of this. Hey, so you all can celebrate all you want to. I told you back in 2010 and 2011 that this day was coming. Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? And if you don't believe me, look back in that archive, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I told all of you that you will rue the day. You will rue the day that you rubbed it in capitalist faces, that you fat, poor, waste of life American people were rubbing it in our faces that you didn't pay anything at the grocery store for your food, that you were getting free EBT, EBT. I just want my EBT, EBT. Hey, those days are long gone now, boy. The capitalists have taken control of state power, and you're just going to have to eat it, eat it, eat it. You're going to eat it and like it. And if you don't, then get your fat ass up and get a job and feed your goddamn self. (sighs) Sorry, tension breaker had to be effing said, all right? All right, sorry. Let's continue on. I'm going to take a couple more gab shout-outs, and then we're moving on with the broadcast, all right? Who else do we have here? We've got uh, Drop the Soap at Auschwitz. Ah, Jesus Christ. We've got Hawking Ga, whatever the hell that means. We've got Happy Birthday Odd Eyes Magician. Uh, We've got Hawking Unplugged. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Good God! Stephen Hawking first, ghost next. Yes, yeah, why do y'all want me dead? These are supposed to be my fans, and they want me dead. I don't understand that. Good God. Maverick diving in the house. BN King in the place. Have a wet backyard, whatever the hell that means. Templeton flies United. Uh, Air, no, don't even kid around about that. I heard that about United Airlines. That some stupid stewardess was telling this poor woman, no, you're going to have to put your little dog in where we put the baggage, up on top of the little compartment. You're going to have to put him in there, and if not, you're going to have to get off the plane. So this poor woman obliged, the, the dog suffocated, and, oh, we're sorry, United Airlines, we're sorry. We're very, very sorry. Jesus Christ. Human race now dumber without hawking? How do you figure that, you stupid moron? How the hell do you figure that? Hawking didn't say anything, but there is no God. No, there is it. There is no God. We came from a big gang bang. We came from a big star man gang bang. We came from a bang bang. I uh, came from a gang bang between Solar Man and the Earth. All right. I'm, I, I'm only going to take a couple of more. God struck the wrong cripple. What the hell do you mean by that, you idiot? First of all, I'm not crippled. But are you insinuating something, boy? Jesus Christ, man. We got Texas marker, whatever the hell that means for heaven's sake. We've got comfy zone is best stream site. Shut up. There's a space out there. <laughs> I gotta hear it again. I'm sorry. I gotta hear it again. Y'all brought it up and y'all brought it up in gab shout outs. Hey, engineer, put on the real voice. The actual hundred percent real voice. This is not a troll, this is not fake. The real voice <laughs> uh, Oh my god. The real voice of <laughs> There's a space outside there. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I got to call 
down, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was funny. That was that was pretty funny. Give me the mic. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right, uh, put on Stephen Hawking's real voice one more time, and then you're going to hear his translator. All right, put it on. I can't I can't do it. I put it on, for Christ's sake. Uh, there's a space outside here. He makes it fairly obvious that that's what Stephen's portrait if he needs. <laughs> that's it, man! That's it right there! Stephen Hawking's real voice! That's it! That's it right there, for Christ's sake, you son of a bitch! And, oh, right as I go back to the Gab shout-outs, what do I have? I've got a trans Stephen Hawking. They put a pair of balls on Stephen Hawking's chin. How original. How original. We've got ghost tracking number, whatever the hell that means. Walkouts for ghosts. Yeah, why don't you go walk out for ghosts? Why don't you go do that? Why don't you walk out your damn schools and say, we're doing this for ghosts. Because we don't need no education. You gotta have like a guitarist on the side there. We don't need no thought control. You know that's what that's what you need to do. All right. Well, I'm just gonna take a couple more of these damn gab shoutouts, and I'm moving on. Black hole to hell. I guess you're referring to Stephen Hawking there. Waltman 13. We've got uh, Ghost Hawking is... Uh, shut up, you idiot. we got Peppa Pig. Are you, are you, do you actually watch that, you man-child? Hawking got his pug, plug pulled. Uh, we've got Hawking EXE has stopped working. 76 years too late. Remember the autistic mo? Oh, you son of a... <laughs> You know, that's it. I was in a good mood. You're going to make fun of the Texas martyrs. You're going to make fun of the Alamo. Screw you. It's over. It's over. It's over. Give me the mic. All right, it's over. All right, you all screwed it up. This is why we can't have nice things, all right? So I'm okay now. I, I've been drinking. Okay, well, as a matter of fact, let me drink some more beer here. I think it's about time for more beer! Freaking cans, for Christ's sake. More beer! Goddamn right, boy. I'm telling you, boy, I'm drinking like a goddamn man, boy. You understand that? I'm drinking like a man. I'm burping like a man. I'm spitting like a man. Here, look, I'm a fart like a man. I'm fart like a goddamn man. <laughs> yeah, you hear that? Anyway, let me move on, all right? Hey, look, why, why are you idiots in the chat room? They're, they're, they're writing sniff. Are you seat sniffers or something, man? Are you kidding me? Do you like smelling methane and figuring out what was Eight that day or something. What the hell? Shit! I'm doing that as a joke, you idiots. And here you are. You wanted to freaking smell my gas. It's gro That's freaking gross, man. It's I was a joke. Anyway, we're gonna move on, folks. All right. Uh, enough of them immature garbage. All right. Let's talk about some serious business here. Let's talk a little bit about Donald Trump news. And that I mean, this is serious business. Donald Trump is cleaning out his cabinet, boy. He has told Rex Tillerson, now former Secretary of State, you're fired! You're fired! And we all know that there was some angst between Tillerson and Trump. 
Tillerson, uh, from what I've heard in the Beltway, this man thought he was the sole decision maker when it came to foreign policy once he was nominated as the Secretary of State. And that's not what you do in a Trump administration. And they've been butting heads as of late, so on and so forth. So uh, it was no surprise that Tillerson at some point was going to get the axe. Now, who is Rex Tillerson being replaced by? The CIA chief, Mike Pompeo. And I think this is a great transition because now Mike Pompeo, he's been in the CIA head position for an entire year. He knows where all the spies are at. He knows all the CIA secrets. He's uh, privy to all the intelligence. He knows. So Pompeo can actually aid the foreign policy of Donald Trump without being against him. Because now Pompeo can utilize the intelligence that he has gathered, being the head of the CIA, and applying that to foreign policy. And I think it's great. I think it's great. I think this is a great transition. You take out the globalist Rex Tillerson, who thinks that he was supposed to be dictating foreign policy for the president. And unless we forget, Rex Tillerson was an executive. Actually, he was the CEO of Exxon. So when you're the CEO of Exxon, you're a pretty hardcore person. Let's just put it that way. I mean, it's not a coincidence that they claim that the most heartless people in the world are gas executives and oil executives, etc. You know? So with that being said, this is no surprise. And this goes back to everything that he's doing. I mean, Donald Trump is literally flushing out the last globalists out of his administration, and now he could put true capitalists, true Americana-type individuals who want to preserve this country, who don't want to oblige a global institutionalism, a centralization of globalism. And I'm glad Donald Trump is president. I keep reiterating this every time I broadcast, but folks, Donald Trump has rocked the planet. He has completely thrown a monkey wrench in the engine of globalism, and they don't know how to react to it. And it's a domino effect. You're having all kinds of countries wanting to go away from institutions that they thought was going to better their country. Case in point, the European Union. I mean, we saw it in the Brexit vote in the UK. Now, where that's going, that's a whole other subject. You saw it in the attempt of uh, the Catalonia situation. You're seeing it with the elections in Italy. I mean, the left in Italy is decimated, and the big reason why you saw these parties take power that don't traditionally take power in Italy was because of the refugee situation. Europe is tired of the refugee situation. But I don't know if you know this, folks. This is just the tip of the iceberg if you happen to be a European Union member state. I mean, now that Merkel has found herself a government that remains her as prime minister, I would caution each and every one of you to realize that there is another three, possibly four million refugees coming into the EU. And the reason that they have to do this is because, well, what else are you going to do? Turkey's got Europe by the balls. And for whatever reason, the European Union and NATO dealt with Turkey. And now that Turkey has got these positions, not only with the European Union and NATO, but is also now a ally of Russia, it's playing all sides at this point in time. And now, you know, we're in a little bit of a pickle now, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, just to say the least. So anyway, look, with that being said, I'm going off Keister. I wanted to go back to uh, Tillerson being fired by the president. He's being replaced by the ex, or now, or he was, he's the current CIA chief, uh, Mike Pompeo. Uh, Pompeo being the current CIA chief, once again, he knows all the spies, he knows all the intelligence, he knows the secrets, and I think that will aid in uh, creating foreign policy for the Secretary of State, as Secretary of State, I should say. Uh, now, who are they going to replace as the CIA head? Well, this is unprecedented, folks. Uh, Donald Trump, as supposedly sexist as he is, nominates the first woman to head the CIA. Now, I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, a woman, really? 
And I said the same thing myself. But if you don't know who Gina Haspel is, I strongly advise you to do your research. This is a hardcore spook, hardcore CIA agent. Uh, As a matter of fact, she headed one of the black operation sites right after the 9-11 attacks in Indonesia, or excuse me, in Thailand, I believe it was. Now, what she was in charge of, believe it or not, was interrogating in a torturous capacity those that were were deemed high profile in gathering information, utilizing these torturous tactics that were utilized during the Bush administration. Now, Gina Haspel is so hardcore, and she tortured a lot of these Jehudis to the point in which Germany has filed a... uh, has filed a complaint which has, I guess, transpired into a warrant out for her arrest in the world court? I mean, (laughs) no wonder Trump uh, nominated this hardcore broad as the damn head of the CIA. She's wanted by the world court for the damn black operation site that she ran in Thailand? I mean, good God, what a mad woman! I'm telling you, man, and let me tell you, I think that Gina Haspel, because, you know, she's such a hardcore, you know, CIA operative, that she will win the respect of most of the CIA, and moreover, uh, she'll be able to weed out all the Obama holdouts that are working in a rogue capacity within the CIA and in other uh, agencies within the government apparatus, you know, so in my personal opinion, I think these are two badasses that have been uh, promoted and one that has been nominated for the head of the CIA. And, you know, why aren't feminists talking about Gina Haspel? I mean, Gina Haspel's a hardcore broad, man. I mean, what's going on here, huh? What's going on? Anyway, very, very good picks. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen with the State Department. Now that you got Mike Pompeo in there, who has all the secrets from the CIA, being the head of CIA, and see what's going to happen to the CIA when Gina Haspel goes in there and cleans house. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, this is good news for the Trump train, all right? Very good news for the Trump train. I mean, unless we forget, for all you people that are concerned that the uh, the CIA head, Gina Haspel, is wanted by the international court or the world court, that should show you that Trump is not a globalist. He is not going to oblige international law, all right? That's, wh- that's another reason why he threw in this woman as, at the head of the CIA. It was a big F you to the globalists, all right? Anyway, I want to talk a little bit uh, about yesterday's actions of the president. He uh, went, obviously, at the beginning of yesterday morning, he announced that he was going to fire Rex Tillerson. Uh, he went on uh, Air Force One to go to San Diego to visit the wall That's right, folks, the wall, it's being built. The prototypes are there, and that's what the president went to go visit and see uh, yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. This guy looked like he was in charge. He was asking questions. Very good photo op. And now that we're seeing prototypes of the wall going up, people, they can't say, build that wall, build that wall, because the wall is being built, baby. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. The wall is being built, and uh, there's nothing you can say about it. You know what I'm saying? The wall is being built. All right? Now, for you people that are going to be critical and say, well, you know, Mexico didn't pay for it. You don't know that yet, first and foremost, because we're still negotiating NAFTA. That's why in this tariff deal that the president implemented through executive action, he exempted Mexico and Canada so they they can make a new deal for NAFTA. And I'm telling you right now, they are going to pay for that wall. They are going to pay for it. Now, if they don't pay for it in the NAFTA deal, they're going to pay for it by any one of their citizens that want to cross our border and cross our wall and come into the United States, then they're going to have to pay a fee. They're going to have to pay money to come in. It's like a nightclub, baby. You want to come into the United States, you got to pay top dollar just to be in our country. And that's what's going to pay for the wall, boy. That's what's going to pay for the wall. Anyway, Trump saw all the prototypes out there. And actually, what he's going to do, he's going to take bits and pieces 
of the designs of all walls incorporated into one. And I'm really looking forward to it. I, I'm looking forward to the future. And I'm glad that this open border nonsense that was implemented during the Obama administration is no more. No more open borders, baby. Thank God. Because what Obama was trying to do was trying to make us like Europe. You know it and I know it. And thank God this president stopped it. Anyway, after he visited the wall, he went to go de deliver a speech at the Marine Corps Air Station in uh, Miramar. And uh, the Marines were just excited to see him. I mean, it was a great electrified crowd. Uh, but in the speech, which was something that was very interesting, he talks about a potential space force. You know, that space is just as big of a realm of warfare as the air, as the sea, as the land. And... Uh, you know, he's talking about potentially creating a space force that will inevitably uh, take down any one of these ballistic missiles that end up going into the uh, outside the ionosphere and be able to kind of traject downward in a trajectory fashion to hit anywhere in the world. So uh, it's kind of like what uh, President Reagan wanted to initiate, the – Space Missile Protection Program, or Star Wars is what they called it. And I guarantee you, had we been working on it, instead of having these leftists gawk at it and scoff at it and, and call it crazy and not fund it, I guarantee you, had Reagan had his funding for the Star Wars program, we wouldn't have any of these ballistic missiles being able to leave the ionosphere and then re-enter into the atmosphere at a capacity and a trajectory and a rocket capacity in which nothing can stop it. But you see, if we had a missile defense system in space, we would be able to stop these missiles. Because you see, what makes a, uh, an intercontinental ballistic missile is the ability to blast off the missile all the way into the point in which it could use the weightlessness of space to basically take one part of the propulsion to get it there. Then once it's in the ionosphere in which it's floating, it utilizes the gravitational pull of the Earth to get it from uh, point A to point B. Once it gets to a certain trajectory point outside the ionosphere, it uses other jet propulsions to be able to deliver it in a fast capacity to the directed target anywhere in the world. Now, if we would have had Star Wars, if we would have had the uh, space missile defense system that Reagan had talked about, we wouldn't even be having these problems with North Korea. We wouldn't be having these problems with Russia. I mean, they'd send a ballistic missile up into the sky. We could blow it up as it's floating while it's trying to get to its uh, trajectory point. We didn't do it. And why didn't we do the missile protection system in space? Because the liberals were like, oh, my God, we can't do it. You're going to provoke a nuclear race, and it's just going to get worse, and it's going to be anarchy, and we can't do it. Well, this, you know, it, it, it would have been useful at this point. All right, there, libtards, it would have been useful. Anyway, let's get to the next subject, folks. The national school walkout was today. That's right, folks. Kids that were in middle school and high school walked out of class for 17 minutes. I thought that they were going to walk out all day. I thought they were going to walk out like walkouts used to be, go out to a football field and just lay down and just sit down there and say, we're not going anywhere until our grievances are acknowledged, etc. But no. All they did was go out, walk around for 17 minutes, and come back to school. Now, you know what that says to me, folks? That that is not a student-induced walkout. That is a public education, leftist, uh, political action group, etc. induced walkout. That's what that is. That's what that is. All right? Because if these students were really concerned about, oh, well, I'm concerned about gun control, and nah, nah, nah. they would be focusing in on not gun control in schools or utilizing schools as a means of gun control. They would be like, wait a minute, where else are people dying? 
And if they take a look at Chicago, where they have the most strictest gun regulation in the country, take a look at how many people are being murdered on a goddamn yearly basis in the past three to four years when it comes to gun violence. This is the most strictest gun laws in the nation, and yet you have the highest gun murder rates in the nation in the city that has the highest regulation of gun control. And if you tell these dumb brats this, they won't believe you. And that's why this whole gun control nonsense is a bunch of crap. When you outlaw the guns, the only people that are going to have the guns are the outlaws. And that's what these stupid little dumbasses don't understand. You understand? They don't understand that if you outlaw the guns, the only people that are going to have them are the outlaws. And when the outlaw has you under gunpoint, and when the outlaw is breaking into your home and has got a gun to your head, how fast is the police going to come and try to nab that particular gunman? How fast is any authority going to come and save your life? Folks, you know as well as I, most of the time the police are always there when somebody's on the floor dead or bleeding or the uh, act of crime has already been perpetrated and they're just there standing around. Haven't you noticed that? That's the traditional way that that, that cops just kind of, you know, kind of cordon off a scene. They just kind of stand around, they're talking and this and that, and, oh, we've got to call in the detective guys and we've got to call in the forensic guys and we've got to call in this, and these guys are just standing around. They're always there after somebody's dead, somebody's bled, somebody's raped, somebody's... I mean, they're, they're never there when the actual act of crime is happening. And when it does, haven't you noticed that it seems as if once they get into a confrontation with a criminal, that a lot of the times the, the cop is not prepared to be able to deal with the perpetrator. And I think that the, that's why we're seeing a lot of cop killing as of late. We're seeing a lot of cop killing because most of these police officers are not trained to deal with actual crime. They're there to deal with shit after the fact. Excuse my French. All right, they're there to deal with things like, oh, well, let me take the report. Let me take a report. Let me write the paperwork. Let me, let me eat a donut. None of these cops, at least most of them, are there to stop crime, in my opinion. Anyway, we are now in the third and final hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Before we get started on anything else, I'd like to remind everybody to please spread this show link around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house and we are live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And it is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, if you have not done so, please follow me on Gab, folks, on Gab. It is the last bastion of freedom of speech in social media today. You can follow me on there under the name Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. And before we get into anything else, I want to remind everybody, since you know we have a lot of demand for it once again, we're going to bring back for a limited time only some true capitalist radio swag, baby. As a matter of fact, People have been wanting the radio graffiti swag back, so that's what we're going to do, all right? You want to go ahead and get some radio graffiti swag? Take a look at my gap! Check out my gap! There it is right there, folks. Radio graffiti garb, radio graffiti swag, there for you at any point in time. So by all means, boys, all right, hook it up right there. Check out my gap! Now that we've got that all out of the way, Let's continue on. I was discussing a little bit about this national school walkout and how these stupid little brats have been usurped by, and let's, who, who have they been usurped by? Who have they been psyoped by? 
They've been psyoped by the left. And how have they been psyoped, folks? Because the left literally is in charge of the culture wars. Because who's the left? We've got Hollywood. That's the left, right? We've got the public education system. That's the left. And the parents, even though they don't know their ass from their elbow, they're just going to follow with what everybody else is doing. So they're most of the time just kind of leaving it up to the public education, Hollywood, and guess who else? Guess who else? The psychology industry. There's only one store that has the freshness of a farmer's market, thousands of club sizes, great party supplies, plus all your everyday groceries with prices up to 25% lower than supermarkets. That's Smart and Final. And now those same low prices delivered to you in two hours or less. At SmartAndFinal.com, get free delivery on your first order over $35. For 48 hours only, get four 12-pack cans of Coke for just $10 plus CRV. Limit four must buy four with a $25 $25 purchase. These are all the leftist variants that have literally molded the modern day absent minded pop culture that these leftists can now manipulate. All right, and that's really what it is. And look, these leftists, all right, these goddamn leftists have been utilizing groups of absent minded people for a long time. Let me just tell you in recent, recent contemporary history. Y'all remember the Occupy Wall Street movement? Oh, my God, the left has tried to exploit that, beat that with a dead horse, and where did that go? That went nowhere. You want to know why? Because no one during those Occupy Wall Street protests could articulate their grievances. None of them could say why they were there. None of them had a cohesive idea in which they were fighting for. None of them had any reason on why they were there other than Oh, we need free college and all oh, the 1% and all these stupid idiotic talking points that didn't sway Mr. and Mrs. Joe Sixpack one bit. As a matter of fact, I think the left realized that it agitated Mr. and Mrs. Joe Sixpack because they realized that, they, that there was nothing but mostly a bunch of millennials that have had everything handed to them on a silver platter, and they're still bitching because they're so incompetent, so ignorant, and so naive that they can't go out in the real world and carve out their own destiny. So they're at mommy's house, they're watching cartoons at 30 years old, they're playing video games, and this is what's anesthetizing these generations. Occupy Wall Street. That's what that, that's what they started with here recently. And then where did they move to after Occupy Wall Street? The Million Woman March. I am woman. Hear me roar. And take a look at where that's going. They don't even know whether they're coming or going, literally and figuratively. All right. They don't know whether or not they're bull-nosed, greasy bull dykes that hate men and that want to be lesbos and that want everything woman this, woman that, or they don't know whether or not they want to be sluts. I mean, Google up slut walk, folks. I'm, I kid you not, there are slut walks still being organized to this day in which women are going out in groups, scantily clad, demanding their right to be called a slut and they're protesting against, quote, slut-shaming. Those are the two variants that you have in feminism, and that's why the left, even though they've exploited the Million Woman March and feminism and all this other nonsense, they haven't gotten anywhere with it. Now, folks, as I talk about this, the reason I'm bringing these up is because I want you to realize that because of the consequences of the leftist influences in the public education system, the parental unit, the psychology industry, Hollywood, etc., they have literally dumbed everybody down to the point where they have found, even the leftists have found, that these, two pe these people that they've tried, they've tried to utilize for political exploitation are too stupid to progress their agenda. And I'm talking about Occupy Wall Street and the Million Woman March. The leftists are realizing that these generations that encompass these groups are too stupid to progress the agenda of the leftist. And I'm going to say this, folks. It's the leftist's fault that they're too stupid. And I have to agree. I said this before the broadcast in the True Capitalist radio chat room. 
I personally believe that everybody from Generation X to about the millennial generation are just a lost cause. They are a lost generation that at this point they are so set in their ridiculous man children, don't want to grow up, I want to be a Toys R Us kid, video gaming playing ways that I don't believe that any of these generations that fall between Generation X and the Millennials are going to do a goddamn thing. They're not going to do a goddamn thing. They, these, these unfortunate uh, demographics, these unfortunate generations are lost. They're going to be nothing more than the equivalent of animals in the timelines of history. And the reason I say this is because, let me show you something, all right? Now I'm going to I'm going to gab out a video of a short video. This is this is a uh, Woodstock 1969. This is uh Arlo Guthrie. Uh he's uh, singing that song, I actually like the song, Coming into Los Angeles. Well, I want you to look at this clip. And I want you to look at what your grandparents were doing when they were 18 to 25 years old. And I want you to take a look at this and see what the hell they were doing. This is your grandparents right here. All right? Here it is right here. This is what the damn baby boomers were doing when they were 18 to 25 years old. Take a look. Take a look at my gab right there. All right? That's what they were doing. They were hanging out in 1969. I think it was like 1.5, almost 2 million young people showed up at Woodstock, New York. And you know what they did? They went out there, oh, peace and love, dude, and yeah, man, we're going to mud fuck, and yeah, man, you know, free love, free sex, free everything. I mean, if you take a look at that clip, these people were doing drugs, smoking weed, sniffing whatever the hell they were sniffing, dropping acid, screwing each other. And you see, folks, this is where all this leftism comes from. You understand? This is where the leftism was set in motion. And you see, it was set in motion because those people that are in that clip right there, who were 18 to about 25, uh, possibly a little older at that time, those people never wanted to grow up either. But the only difference is, is that they were exposed to everything that encompassed living real life. Like going out to a concert, going out to a freaking, I don't know, hippie commune, having freaking open sex orgies, swinging, drug taking, coke, coke snorting, all this stuff. I mean, this is what they were doing. This is what they were doing. And you know something else? They were politically aware, unlike you people. Unlike you Generation Xers to Millennials, they were politically aware and they were not afraid to assert their political dominance. And you know something? They were aware of it. They were aware of it. And the reason I say this is because uh, there is a song by the Doors called Five to One. Okay? Five to One. In which he talks about that there were five baby boomers, all right, to every one older person that was around at that particular time, 69 to about 75, all right? There were five to every one old person, five baby boomers, young baby boomers at the time for every one old person. And they were aware of this. They understood this. Here, I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you listen to the clip. This is The Doors 5 to 1, and I'm going to let you listen to the first lyrics of it. And I want you to hear it. They told you. I mean, you know, these baby boomers were very aware. While you people are fucking sitting with your damn mommy until you're 35 years old, playing video games, being a man-child, watching goddamn cartoons, these people were politically aware at 18 years old. Wake up, you stupid morons! Here, let's listen to it. Let's listen to the song Five to One by The Doors. This is this is the Baby Boomer song, man. This is them asserting their dominance over the older generations. This is them asserting their dominance over the older generations. Listen, just listen. Let's go ahead. Put it on, engineer! Dude, come on. Love my girl. Five to one, baby. One in five. 
You're too happy being obnoxious cartoon. 
still watching pieces of crap. That's why you're a lost generation. You're a lost cause. You're lost. That's why the liberals are going after the children. That's why they're going after the children. That's why they scheduled this goddamn national school walkout. Because now they're going after right to the root. They're going right to the children. They know Generation X and the millennials are gone. They're useless. They're nothing. They're nothing. They know it. They know it. That's why they're going to your children. That's why they're going to middle schools and high schools. That's why they're doing it. Wake up. Damn it. Christ. Listen to the rest of this goddamn song. This is the Baby Boomers, and they wrote this crap in the early 70s because they knew. They knew they were politically awake. They knew they had the knowledge. They knew they had the will. You don't have the will to do shit. You barely have the will to go out and get yourself a goddamn set of clothes. You barely have the will to get up every day and play a fucking video game. Wake up! Wake up! Christ! Turn on the goddamn song, engineer! Gonna win, yeah, we're taking over! Come on! and that sort of thing. Your ballroom days are over, baby. Night is drawing near. Shadows of the evening crawl across the years. Yeah, walk across the floor with a flower in your hand. Trying to tell me no one understands. Reading your hours for a half of the dime. Gonna make it, baby, in our prime. Did you hear that? You walk across the floor with a flower in your hand, trying to tell me no one understands. Trade your hours for a handful of dimes. Gonna make it, baby, in our prime. Prime Come together One more time Anyway, shut it off Shut up, you get it, man The only reason I showed you guys this song Is because they knew it They knew it back then And they took control of the government They took control of everything Baby boomers have 85% of the wealth 85% of America's wealth. I mean, give me a break, you morons. I mean, that's why I'm so critical of you autists and you Asperger idiots and you gamers and you people that watch cartoons and think that you can be a man-child for the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to, you morons. Do you understand that you are being prepped to be nothing more than a subject to the state? All right? You are, you are being prepped to be nothing more than a subject to the state. You are nothing. And you want to know who made you nothing? The baby boomers made you nothing. 
That's why they threw goddamn video games in your face. That's why they threw you in cartoons. That's why they pilled you. That's why they drugged you. They drugged you. Did these baby boomer parents drug them? No. Why are they drugging you? Don't you ever answer that question? Why are they drugging you? Why? Haven't you asked that question? Why aren't they drugging themselves? Why didn't their mother drug them? Why? Freaking wake up, man. You young people better get up off your ass or these people are going to enslave your ass. They're already doing it. They're already doing it with the student loan program, you dicks. You got to pay student loans for the next 25 years of your life. You know who brought that into law, you idiots? Obama! Obama nationalized the goddamn student loan industry, you morons. He's the reason why you've got to pay your student loan for the rest of your life. Wake up! God damn it, you fucking people are so stupid! I mean, it, it just, it sucks! It sucks! I mean, sometimes I see so much of this goddamn man-child shit. I see so much of it, it almost seems overwhelming, man. It's like, ghosts, what are you doing? These people are lost. It's over. The freaking Generation X to the Millennials are gone. It's done. It's over. They're mindless. They don't care about their political goddamn responsibilities. They don't care about their Bill of Rights. They don't care about anything. Oh, but can I play a video game? Can I look at a My Little Pony? Can I see the anime? Can I do it? I, I don't want to grow up. I want to be a toy to Yes, yes, forget it, yay. When we have a whole goddamn, goddamn country of these fucking people, what do you think the country's going to look like when we have a whole country of these idiots? What is this country going to look like? Who's going to rule it? And what's going to happen? God damn it, this fucking... God damn it. God damn it, none of you young people are listening. I mean, do you hear my voice? I'm not fucking around. I'm not fucking around. Fucking wake up, you idiots, man! Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet of fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet of fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal. Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet of fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet of fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal. You're not going to get any more warnings than this, man. No one else is going to warn you. No one else is going to tell you this. Your stupid parents didn't do it. Your goddamn grandparents didn't do it. And they got to live their lives. They got to be independent. They got to do whatever they wanted to do. Give me the freaking money. Look, folks, I'm fucking pissed off. I'm sorry for cursing, but, man, I'm telling you, I cannot stand that we have these dumb young people, and I'm not talking about, like, all oh, the young 18, and the, I'm talking about anybody under the age of fucking 35. 
Anybody under the age of 35, if, if you ain't contributing to the point in which you're owning or you're in charge of something, you're taking control of this system, then you're a fucking piece of shit. And I'm sorry if I'm hurting your goddamn feelings, but if you do nothing, then you are nothing, you fucking idiots. If you do nothing, you are nothing. If you do nothing, you are nothing. Don't you understand that? If you do nothing, you are nothing! I'm fucking so sick of this fucking show, man. Sitting over here, I'm freaking broadcasting for nothing! This whole goddamn fucking place! Let me tell you something, man. This is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that this place is going to turn into the totalitarian communist shit that we are trying to stop with Trump. Trump is just a holding pattern. Trump is just a holding pattern. Who's going to take the place of Trump? What leaders do we have out here? We don't. We don't. So, look, I'm going to end the fucking show, man. I'm fucking sick of this shit. I fucking do this show all the fucking time, and I don't get shit for it. And the only reason I do it is to try to enhance the mental capacity of anybody who's fucking listening to this goddamn thing. And it doesn't seem like anyone's listening. Like some of these idiots, like this idiot Elaine Bennett's over here. I see you only... I'll, I'll, are we doing shout-outs? Well, I'll be back later when there's a radio graffiti. <laughs> Fucking out of here. Go fuck yourselves. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Fucking, fucking goddamn fucking losers, for Christ's sake, man. Sitting over here. I'm fucking giving you my all, man. I'm giving you fucking every fucking thing, man. And what do you do? You stay there and you think it's a fucking joke. You think this life, this political system, the things that have gone on in 2016, you think it's a joke. So I'm out of here. Give me the fucking mic. I'm getting out of here. If y'all expected radio graffiti, go shove it up your asses, man. All right? Why don't you go fucking walk with these stupid brats that the liberals have now taken control of that are walking out begging for their Second Amendment being taken away from them? Why don't you go hang out with those stupid losers, all right? Dumb kids that don't know why they're fucking marching out, go march with them. God damn it, man. Get me the fuck out of here.